We're live. We're live. We're live. <laughs> hey, y'all. Stephen uh, and Jesse coming to you again from the Center for Birds of Prey. Um, it's the, the 6th of April. 7th. 7th of April. Tuesday. Uh, we're uh, continuing to truck along here at the Center for Birds of Prey. Hopefully, uh, all of you are doing well out there. Uh, in response to some of our recent live streams we had we've, we've asked for questions of, and things you're curious about and uh, in more than one instance we had people say hey do something about eagles um, everybody loves eagles and we talk a lot about bald eagles on our tours here so um, today the only real difference is we're coming at you from a slightly different angle uh, we're inside exposure today with two of our bald eagles jesse and i are kind of creeping to the corner here hoping that they'll um, get a little more comfortable and get back up on the perches like they were before we got in here but um, we're going to talk about bald eagles a little bit today. Um, it's a, an eagly time here at the center. We've got a lot going on with bald eagles. Uh, over the next week or so, we're going to be featuring them um, in a couple of ways, and we'll talk more about that, um, a little bit later. But you are individual stories, and also the bald eagle as a species has a really um, wonderful conservation story. So about them today. If you have questions, um, Jesse will do her best to, to get those off to us from the comments and, um, and we'll, we'll take it from there. So first a little bit about bald eagles, just general information. Uh, they're a raptor, so just like the hawks and the falcons and the owls, they have grasping feet that they use to catch and kill things. Um, they're from a group that we call the fish eagles. So uh, there are fish eagles found throughout most of the world. I think there are eight or nine species of them. I forgot to look, of course, before today how many species of fish eagles there are. But um, they live, uh, as the name might suggest, in places where you'd expect to find fish. Their diet consists largely of fish. Um, and uh, all that comes together nicely when you look at most of the fish eagles around the world. The eagle part is really just a size thing. They're a, a, uh, from the, the uh, group of raptors that are large. So bald eagles, again, primarily living where there's water. Depending on the time of year, though, they may not be in certain places. They're a migratory bird, like most birds are. Um, their migration is a little bit different than sort of the traditional way of thinking about it, at least for us here in South Carolina. These are birds that spend their fall and winter with us, and then they move someplace else when the summer months come. So we're kind of uh, nearing the end of the time where we will expect to see a lot of bald eagles here in coastal South Carolina. They'll be heading north shortly. Um, fish eagle is the, um, the giveaway for primary diet, but they will eat just about anything. Bald eagles are <clears throat> notorious for being scavengers. They find things dead and they will eat them, any, any animal they can locate. Uh, they're also quite renowned for being thieves. We call it kleptoparasitism, where uh, an eagle finds uh, some other predator that has already killed prey and comes in and takes it because they can. Uh, it's one of the reasons that back in uh, 1782, when the bald eagle was designated as the national emblem of the United States, there were some detractors to, um, to that, some folks that disagreed. Uh, Benjamin Franklin was the most notable of those. He said, bald eagles, cowardly scavengers and thieves, um, we wouldn't want them like that to be our national emblem. They have bad moral character. These are all Benjamin Franklin's words, not mine. But um, so that's sort of the, the general gist of bald eagle uh, nature, lots of other areas that we can go off and talk about. Um, I want to talk specifically about these two birds to explain um, their circumstances and how they ended up here with us. Um, these are birds, both of which were treated at a medical clinic. It looks like one of them is getting a little more comfortable. Maybe going to and hop up on this perch so we can get a perhaps a better look. These are birds that were treated uh, in the mid 2000s. One of them was admitted in 2004 and one in 2006. Uh, both of them had relatively relatable stories. Uh, actually, I learned something new today, something that I've been teaching incorrectly about these specific birds. I always said that they were both birds that were involved in car collisions, uh, while in reality, only one was actually involved in a car collision. We'll get to what the other one um, had as issues 
So car collision, obviously an issue for wildlife, especially scavenging wildlife um, like the bald eagle. So um, they eat things that are dead. We expect to find things that are dead by the highway. Uh, the inevitable often happens. Some things we can do to prevent that from happening. We can keep the highway edges clean. Uh, we can go out there and, and make sure that if someone's littering, we're picking it up. We can make sure that if we can, we move roadkill to a safer spot. So hit by cars so one of the birds is one that had a, a wing injury related to a car collision it actually had to have part of the wing amputated as a result uh, the other bird that had a another uh, relatively common issue that we see in eagles and other birds of prey uh, it was involved in an electrocution incident uh, fortunately not a fatal electrocution but um, the one of these birds was zapped, if you will, by an electrical line. Uh, we know that eagles and other birds like to perch in tall spots, and sometimes tall utility poles are where they'll uh, where they'll sit. And unfortunately, if the poles aren't designed properly, uh, bird can touch the live wire and the grounding pole at the same time, which causes an electrical shock to go through their body. Same type of injury to the tip of the wing that resulted in a very similar. Um, amputation circumstance uh, but a very different method of it happening we know that this happens I actually saw it happen uh, about 10 years ago I watched a, a bald eagle that um, was zapped electrical line uh, unfortunately died but um, it does happen we know that there are ways to prevent it by spacing the the live wire from the pole in a, in a more effective way and, and electrical companies utility companies are aware of that and working on correcting it where they find the problem so both of these birds like many bald eagles that are admitted into our medical facility had injuries that they sustained unfortunately for them their injuries didn't have a positive resolution there was no way we could fix what was wrong with them and put them back out into the wild uh, so at the time that they were admitted um, we had to make a decision we decided based on these birds temperament uh, based on these birds uh, age at the time that they would make good educational candidates for us uh, and they've been both of them living with us as educational ambassadors for over a decade now so um, one of them nigh on 20 years has been with us doesn't feel like that long uh, but uh, it has been quite some time I think maybe let's try Jesse to sneak over to a different corner and see if we can get them back up on a perch do we have any questions on there while we're endangered heading? species so great question um asking about the status of the bald eagle so this is i'll leave time for them to talk whenever they whenever they choose to it's kind of fun hopefully, hopefully you could hear that vocalization like we could um that bird was saying something i'm not sure what it was pretty clear that it was directed uh, at our movement. So um, we're hoping maybe they'll get a little more confident and get up on that perch. But um, endangered species. The bald eagle is a bird that was nearly eradicated here in the United States. They share a story similar to many, many predator species around the world. Uh, the, the old way of thinking was that predators were bad. Getting rid of predators was probably the best strategy for making the earth a, a nice place to live. Um, fortunately, we have realized that that is not a strategy. It doesn't uh, doesn't serve anyone any any purpose at all, um, and it can cause lots of problems. But um, believe it or not, the Endangered Species Act is a relatively recent um, a relatively recent development. The Endangered Species Act was not enacted until 1972. Uh, the bald eagle was one of the species that was listed uh, at the beginning of the Endangered Species. Act as an endangered species. So in 1972, they were listed as an endangered species. Uh, prior to that, they were actually protected by uh, another law, a few other laws, the, um, the Golden Eagle Protection Act, which was enacted in 1940, I believe. And I wrote all these dates down on a, on a white way across the enclosure where we were a minute ago. Uh, and then they were also protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, which was in, uh, I believe, 1916. Um, at any rate, the the um, the bald eagle was protected as an endangered species. So uh, it begs the question to be asked, which is what the heck happened to cause the bald eagle to uh, crash in numbers? We know that 
Carolina as an example. Here in our state, um, the, the landscape has enough room, a carrying capacity, if you will, for about 500 pairs of bald eagles to nest here. There's enough room for that many. And we estimate that before Europeans settled here and started changing the landscape, there were probably that many pairs nesting here. In the mid-1970s, uh, so when the Endangered Species Act was enacted and states started uh, surveying their populations of bald eagles to see what was left and what we were working from in terms of protecting them, there were only 13 pairs of bald eagles left in our state. So from 500 breeding pairs estimated down to 13. What happened? Uh, well, uh, that story of predators are bad, that was a big part of it. We paid bounties on them up until the middle of the last century. Um, and then we poisoned them in, in, um, in a way that nobody was expecting. Um, secondary poisoning from something called DDT, which is a pesticide that kills mosquitoes and it accumulates up the food web and it causes problems productively for birds, makes their eggshells really thin. Uh, so uh, we, we changed their habitat, we killed as many as we could intentionally and then unintentionally affected them with a pesticide and, and almost lost them. Uh, fortunately, they've recovered. So in 2007, the bald eagle was removed from the Endangered Species Act. They're one of only a few animals that have, have come off of the act. They were delisted um, because the science said that they had recovered. So there were enough breeding pairs and enough uh, stability in their populations. We think they're probably close to 400 breeding pairs in our state today, which is pretty awesome. So um, we can fix problems if we try to. Um, obviously, there are still other problems out there, things that are um, causing issue, and we'll maybe talk about some of those here in a minute or two. Um, what other questions we got, Jesse? Uh, how often are these the eagles handled while here? I'm not sure if that's a education or clinic directed question, but... So um, how often do we handle eagles while they're here? Um, that depends on the eagle and what the circumstances are. These eagles um, we know are healthy other than their, their deficit. They don't have any uh, ongoing health problems. Obviously having a wing amputated causes a, a one-time health disability. They'll never die again, but we know that. Um, in terms of their overall health, they're doing quite well. And their job is to be on display. So usually you'd come and you'd be on the other side of that screen that you looking in at these birds. Uh, so handled all that often. Um, we do handle them periodically for what we call condition checks. So um, we look them over, make sure that there's no new problems that we might need to be aware of or no indication of any problems that we might need to check for. Uh, we may take blood samples at that point or fecal samples to analyze the, the bird's health. We do that a few times every year. Um, sometimes we may need to catch them because of a specific problem that someone notices. So maybe they, um, they end up with a, uh, a scratch on their leg or their face or whatever the, that we need to address. Um, some birds in the medical facility need um, treatment on a regular basis. So, uh, watching uh, today and throughout the week, you're going to meet a bald eagle that has gone through medical care in our hospital. Um, and um, some of those birds may need bandage changes every day or every other day. They may need physical therapy for their injuries. Uh, they may need uh, all kinds of treatments that have to happen on a more regular basis. So in those cases, the birds may be handled more often. Um, and then we do have some other birds that live in our educational department that are uh, birds that we train for demonstrations. If you watched our kite program the other day, you met a bird that gets handled all the time. Um, so somewhere on that continuum is where birds fall in terms of how often we handle them. These two uh, are handled by us very much. Um, they do get a lot of exposure to us. I was just in this enclosure last week cleaning up after them, uh, and that's something that they have to get used to seeing and being a part of. Question about temperament, bald eagles and other birds of prey. So temperament. Um, so we know that they're all individuals, so we can, um, we can make generalizations about certain species and likelihood. To, to have certain behaviors. Um, you could see these two individual birds. Um, well, maybe you couldn't see before we got here, but they were up on the perch. And when we got in here, they got nervous and they jumped away from us. Even birds like these that have been here for a decade, um, sometimes when things are different. So we thought, hey, today we'll go in there and, and um, film them from the inside live. We came in last week just to test to see how they would do and they sat on the perches beautifully and we had a nice angle. Uh, but these two today, for whatever reason, um, are, are nervous. Uh, we have 
test their temperament if we're planning on keeping a bird for education and we did that many years ago with these birds uh, and we said they have a relatively calm demeanor they'll make good uh, potentially make good educational ambassadors and they have um, we're not always right but we have to assess it um, even a big bird like this so bald eagles are some of the largest birds that we deal with at the center um, they afraid of us. They uh, see us and automatically want to go the other way as quickly as we can. And how big is big? Just to head off that question, these two weigh about eight pounds a piece. So um, that's uh, amongst the largest of the birds. This one's going to hopefully hop around the corner and hop back up on the perch there. Um, thinking about it for sure. On the note of size, is my nest. Yep. So now big are their nests. This is the time of year where eagle chicks are fledging from their nest. I didn't get to that yet, but we'll, we'll talk about that. And their nests are gigantic. So before we guys, I'll just tell the story of eagle nests. They use the same nest year after year after year. The same pair come back to nests year after year after year. Uh, in some cases in South Carolina, there are nests that have been active for close to a century. So that's a hundred years where every year there have been two eagles nesting on that nest. Not necessarily the same two eagles, but a chain of eagles, if you will, all using the same uh, structure to lay their eggs and incubate their eggs and raise their chicks. As you might imagine, um, for a large bird, you have to have a large nest. And um, adding in the fact that these, these structures get added to year after year, um, they kind of do home improvements before they lay their eggs. Um, some of these nests are gigantic. They can be uh, close to 10 feet in diameter and uh, in some cases from top to bottom of the nest um, up to about six feet of sticks stacked on top of one another. Uh, and they can weigh close to a ton. So that's a large structure. Typically they're found in live trees. It makes sense when you think about the fact that uh, it takes a living tree to be able to support such an enormous um, where an eagle might live. Um, let's, Jesse, I'm going to slowly kind of creep around this corner and see if we can get back in front of that bird just for the angle. And the other one's thinking about maybe getting back up on the perch. So their nests are quite large. We didn't talk about nesting. I kind of have hit on it a few times, but bald eagles are different than most birds, at least the ones here in South Carolina, in that they nest in the winter. So bald eagles typically return to the state of South Carolina in the fall. Um, they show up here in September, October from their summer vacation, if you will. They spend their summers in the uh, northeastern part of the United States for eastern birds and in the northern part, so in the Chesapeake Bay for a lot of our birds. They come back in the fall. They get back with their mate on their nest territory. They spruce up that nest a little bit, if you will, uh, add some sticks, uh, and lay their eggs in the fall and winter of the year. And the chicks hatch generally in uh, January or February. Uh, what that means is uh, by this time, by April, those chicks are now about three months old. That's how long it takes a bald eagle to go from a hatchling out of the egg to a bird ready to fledge, full grown, ready to leave the nest and go and be on its own. We know um, because we've seen it a couple of times um, that eagle chicks, right? seen a few into our medical clinic that left the nest perhaps a little early, a day or two early, and injured themselves in the fall. Um, some of them, you know, they just, they maybe get pushed out by a sibling or maybe they just make the choice to, to take off and they're not quite ready. Um, we're in the process right now of putting one back in a nest right here, uh, very near the center. And we'll be bringing some more information, hopefully on that um, later in the week. Uh, and then uh, as the weather starts to warm, they head north again. So out of here, leaving South Carolina, heading back up to the Northeast. Now, some bald eagles, the ones up and in the um, northern tier, they breed a little more um, like a standard, typical bird breeding behavior in the spring. Um, but again, our bald eagles here in South Carolina have, have shifted completely to, um, to getting ready to move. All right. Couple what other questions, questions we have? Uh, let's see. On average, how many bald eagles does the clinic receive each year? Ooh, there's a great question that I don't have an answer to, but um, I know that we have treated between one and 200 uh, bald eagles. I believe we've released over 140 or so bald eagles from the medical clinic over the last 30 years or so. But that's a really good question. And what I'll do is I'll pose that question to our clinic director offline here uh, and she can um, 
give us a um, a good answer to that so that we know but they're not the most common bird that we deal with obviously given that uh, their numbers have increased over the last three decades from two of them to you know, perhaps thousands of them in the state during the the busy season uh, we see more of them uh, the injuries that they sustain again a lot of them from collision another issue i want to point out uh, because it's an important one that we see in bald eagles in our medical facility is secondary toxicity now i mentioned secondary toxicity from ddt uh, the thing the pesticide that killed mosquitoes that caused their eggshells to be thin remember that uh, but this is a different kind of secondary toxicity that we're seeing in bald eagles it's secondary poisoning from lead uh, you may uh, aware of it but lead is a, an element found on our planet does all kinds of things we use it for lots of things uh, to make things uh, and unfortunately lead despite all its great properties is uh, toxic to most animals if they ingest it so if we eat lead um, it makes us sick if a bald eagle eats lead it makes them sick. Now, uh, those of you that are old enough to remember the 1970s may remember that we used to use lead in gasoline and in paint, and then we realized that it was doing bad things to, to human beings. Young children were chewing on windowsills when they were running around their houses, and they were eating that paint that had, and that was bad. And the, uh, the exhaust fumes from our cars had lead in them, and, and that was bad, causing problems. So we stopped doing that. Um, so where's the lead coming from that today these bald eagles are encountering? By the way, you know, more than half of all the eagles that come into our hospital are suffering from elevated levels of lead in their systems. Um, we think that that lead is probably coming from a number of sources but some of the most prominent are in ammunition and in fishing tackle. So many of you may be sportsmen and women out there, especially those of you in South Carolina who like to go out hunting deer or turkey or any of those animals that we might hunt legally in, a, in, a, in the United States. Well, unfortunately, in many cases, the ammunition that hunters are using is still made out of lead. And so the ammunition that gets left behind in either um, animals that aren't collected or animals, parts of animals that are left in the field it's left behind for scavengers like bald eagles if they come in and eat you know that causes a problem another source would be in fishing tackle um, so um, a lot of folks don't realize it but the must much of our fishing tackle is made from lead the thing that sinks your bait to the bottom is usually made out of lead and again if we leave that in the field and then an animal ingests it it's going to cause problems so it's something to be aware of and alert to that a lot of our scavengers especially vultures are suffering from the effects of lead that we're leaving out in our environment a couple of questions whitehead uh, average lifespan and when they migrate uh, over the summer, do they do so as a mating pair? So that's a lot of great questions all at once. So we'll start with the whitehead. Um, the scientific name of the bald eagle, by the way, Haliatus leucocephalus. Haliatus means salt eagle. Leucocephalus, if you break that word up, leuco uh, means white, like a leukocyte is a white blood cell. Well, these are the white-headed salt eagle. Cephalus means head. So these are the white-headed salt eagle. Not all bald eagles have a white head, only the adults. So it is a characteristic that comes with time. Uh, that 12-week-old that fledges from the nest doesn't look like these birds. It has a, a dark colored head and a dark colored beak and dark colored eyes. And then as they reach when they're ready to be a potential mate, they uh, morph into this white-headed, white-tailed creature. That happens at, over about the first five years of their life. So you may see a bald eagle that doesn't have a white head and a white tail. It has a dark head and a dark tail. That's just a young one. Um, average life um, is going to be a lot lower than you might expect. Uh, even though we know bald eagles can live many, many years, these birds are um, 20, almost 20 years old, uh, maybe even older in, um, in one of their cases, uh, most of them aren't going to live more than three or four years. The average is probably in the neighborhood of four to five years life expectancy. And the reason that average number is so low is that lots of them don't survive their first year. So uh, if we think about a bald eagle's life, it hatches from an egg and then 12 weeks later it flies away from its nest and it's on its own. It doesn't have mom and dad taking care of it anymore. It has to migrate somewhere, has to find enough to eat and not end up in As you might imagine, that can be tough to do. A lot of them don't succeed in that. So average lifespan, not very long. Potential lifespan, somewhere in the 50 to 60 year range is 
um, that were banded in the wild in the 1970s that are still out there. Their thing. Um, in terms of migrating, we don't think they migrate together necessarily. In fact, they may go to completely different places uh, as their uh, as their mate. They just return to the breeding grounds um, as uh, as a breeding pair. A lot of times during the non breeding season as well, we'll see big aggregations of bald eagles. So while during the breeding season they're very territorial, they don't want another adult eagle anywhere near their nest because unless it's their mate, because that would mean uh, competition. But during the non breeding season. And they may get in big groups and feed wherever there's plenty of food to be found. To feed on. Looks like more questions, huh? No? Okay. Let me make sure that we covered everything on our board over here. Um, I think we did, yeah. 1972 Migratory Bird Treaty Act. 1973 the Endangered Species Act. 2007 they were from the Endangered Species Act. They're doing quite well. Bald and Golden Eagle. I think we covered most of that stuff. So um, a couple of just wrapping up things about <clears throat> bald eagles and about things to keep an eye on for the rest of the week. So I mentioned we have a lot going on with bald eagles in our meadow. Um, they are currently in the final stage of release of a bald eagle. So check back on media. I believe there's going to be a post in the morning that kind of gives some backstory on the bird. And, and then our plan is to go live um, with a release. A uh, bird was treated in our medical facility uh, and has been treated to the extent that it is now ready to go back out and get another. And we thought, uh, hey, what a great thing to go live with the folks that are watching out there. So, um, again, keep an eye out for one o'clock tomorrow is when that release is happening, barring any uh, technological issues we might have in the field. Uh, we're going to do our best to get this bird close to um, where it came from so that it can go back out and do what it needs to do um, in an effective Still have to be here to take care of these animals. Jesse still has to be here to uh, to put up with me, um, and our the rest of our team uh, is still on the other days doing what we're doing to take care of these birds. If there are things that you're curious about that we do, we'd love to hear what you're curious about so that we can share it with you. Um, if there are things that you want to know, we get that information to you. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, it's a great time to see bald eagles. They're more in the air right now in South Carolina um, than probably any other time of the year. So that's a great chance to see them now as the young are fledging before they head back north. So keep your eye out for a big, broad winged, um, dark um, colored bird with a very flat wingspan. They look a lot like our turkey vultures when they're flying, but instead of rocking like turkey vultures do with their wings in a V, they hold their wings very flat. So they almost look like a plank when they're moving. Uh, you may see them uh, any place in the coastal zone right now. Uh, so keep your eye out. And even if you don't see a bald eagle, you'll probably see some other really exciting birds in your yard. We'd love to hear about those things that you're seeing too. So uh, keep us in the loop and, um, and keep up with your social distancing. And uh, we hope we'll see you back again sometime soon and check in tomorrow, one o'clock for that uh, bald eagle release.